Alrighty, uh, I guess we're at an interesting stage now. Um, yellow kind of pulled back, didn't do a whole hell of a lot playing with some digging, you can see, extending further and further. And it's running to the point where <laughs> we got enough for the deck. There's no question, I think, of that. It looks like it's about the right number. But we sure as hell don't have enough to go through the deck again unless I'm able to figure out something like, hey, you know, I can get rid of this piece. I can get rid of some of these pieces. Uh, as of right now, I think I'm either going to have to make up my own way of indicating tunnels, which I could do with blank counters and such. Not. There's no problem with doing that. Or just say, eh, digging's done. That's it. That takes too much out of the game in my view, but I, I really like the ability to counter react, you know, to counter people's positionings by say throwing throwing some blockage in their way, as was done here to prevent anyone from attacking across. In addition, uh, the ability to grow your own resources so you can actually do things seems kind of inherent and necessary to the game. So digging seems like a, a fundamental part of the game, and I don't want to just say, well, deck's done, that's it. Um, which means I'm going to have less visually appealing map pieces very soon. Okay, so that's uh, Yellow Red's turn. Okay, he walked up here, he blew, he had 42 points built up, he blew all but six of them. They're not going to matter. Fired off, destroyed, uh, I don't know, there was something big, some Hellion or something or other. Kicking around here, this high Hellion. He killed that, and then he killed the two shoddy uh, uh, abominations, just for good measure. They were the only other thing he could target. Walked away, and summoned himself some stuff. Um... He summoned this crit critter, but he also summoned a shoddy abomination of his own to go off and grab the bomb to help him do stuff with that. Now that bomb might be of great interest. It destroys all medium and large. Uh, most of these are large, so that's an easy way to wreck the statue without having to actually fight that big 48. Wow, he's looking like he's got a good shot at it now. <laughs> All right, and uh, you know, sacrificing a shoddy is not a bad deal at all. The question, of course, is can other people rush in? Remember, he's still got his special ability, which is to uh, grab control of a squad. But, you know, if victory's on the line, you got to sacrifice something. In a two-player game, that ability would have been fired off quite a long time ago because you put pressure on somebody like that to force them to use it or essentially die or surrender large portions of the cavern or whatever. So usually it does get used. And it's a bad, you know, it sucks to use it up, but usually you get a good creature off of it. But so far in this game, he hasn't had to fire it off. In fact, nobody's had to fire off their abilities except this guy who needed to do his teleport to safely get out of the area. And that's about the best that it can do under my interpretation of that teleport. If you can teleport your whole squad, wow, that's a suicide squad activity. You could jump in and kill somebody anytime you're stronger than them. Mm, um, that seems a little extreme. I mean, it really does. Anytime your necromancer can get together a pack that's stronger, you could kill someone. Here, at least, you have to do it with spells that you've got activated on you, that, that you've already cast on yourself to boost yourself, and items, and stuff like that. So, it's a little bit less potent. <laughs> it's still pretty dangerous, though. You pick up a bomb, you teleport, boom, you drop it, and there goes, uh, you know, you might be able to put yourself into a position where you can... Uh, use the teleport, summon a critter, hand him the bomb, and he blows up the enemy necromancer. And you haven't moved. All you've done is teleported your ability. All right. So we'll be moving on to purple, see if he can do anything about red, who looks like they've got the victory lined up. I caught myself having cheated for a long time. This insectoid fungaloid was wearing the spiked shin guards. He has no ability to use an item to have an item. He's had them for a long-ass time. 
uh, I ended up transferring them over to the Necrotic Devil for whatever reason. Anyway, because I like to cheat better for some people than others. I don't know. I don't have any real affiliation with any of these guys. Although this guy, he looks really cool. <laughs> Just that. Ah. Um, okay, so he cast a couple of things. Uh, one may just win him the game which is this controlled collapsed. Again, therefore, the state of this becomes important, right? Uh, how I want to deal with that. If I can collapse Red, who has, I think, no digging ability whatsoever, then I have some time to position myself and destroy the statue. And the statue is ready to fight right now. It's not going to help anyone. And then, to help me fight, I threw this rather cheap thing because I have a... Oh, not as bad as I thought I have one. Uh, I had a severe lack of the black fire, although I've got more coming to me. And this thing didn't cost me any. Strangely enough, I have another armored slug, which is expensive on that side, probably from a different deck. Uh, looks about the same overall cost, and about the same stats, I guess. In fact, exactly the same stats, same special ability, which is if he's killed, uh, all enemies are kind of stuck in yuck for a d4 turns, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, but anyway, I can't cast the spell immediately because I invoked it. My, nec uh, my necromonks are the only thing that have any casting ability, I think, and they're running far behind my necromancer. But I pulled all my units up. I'm planning on pushing in. It's going to be over soon. There's no question there, I think. Uh, although some people might have some way of, well, maybe teleporting or dropping rocks on me or something to prevent me from getting it back to my crystal. For Gray, a little bit of continued digging here. Uh, this Ogre Lord had some goods he had to pass off to the Necromancer who ran by him and pretty much grabbed everything he could and then summoned up a possible interesting thing that unknown ghost that lets him bring a squad through and this brain sentry who allows me to get control of an opponent creature within two space radius until end of turn if i use them right and someone manages to get the eyes from this it might be possible that i can grab the eyes however they're an object i don't think i can transfer move them through the rocks so I need the Ogre Lord in place to try to dig through some of these rocks. i got to be careful not to let this thing out if I can help it. Because that is a serious danger to anything. It's a, not a tremendous creature. No, the Ogre could actually probably beat it if it attacks. But, you know, it's got its scary effects. And I'd rather not let it out of uh, out of the rocks on my own if I can help it. If I have to, I will though, and maybe fight it. Okay, so yellow is kind of drifting their way downward, hoping to get involved in the fight and have some chance at it. Uh, actually digging into this one empty space here, I figure, like, I figure that you cannot excavate into a tunnel that already exists, but you can excavate even if you know that you're going to cover all kind of stuff that's not that tunnel without any problem. Um, over here, Red started to position themselves, picked up that bomb, and you can see they got themselves trapped. Uh, because Purple dropped a collapse on them, which is kind of hard to align completely properly. It, it is properly aligned, it's just a matter of, uh, things start falling everywhere. Um... And now they have no way out. So only purple really has free play in that area. But I've got to be real careful. This necromancer, anything within three of him, he can take command of immediately and start causing problems. Uh, which could at least delay the game a little bit. And now we're up to the gray player who has some work to do to try to clear some of the rubble in his way of getting into the game now because this is the game and gray ends up uh 
preparing themselves to start trying to ooze through if near be, need be. Some digging here, and then uh, a dig through worked here, and I'm trying to maybe form another way in to have some effect. It looks pretty clear purple is the person who's going to be going for it. And now they're the person I have to try to steal it from if I can figure out a way to do so. The brain sentry is the best option for me to try to get the item. Um, I could even use that, well, see if I'm in the stone, I could use that to grab the item. Then my unknown ghost won't be able to pull the item through the stone with me, but I could dig my way to the item and maybe have the best opportunity there. I have good digging resources compared to purple and certainly compared to poor red who has none. Uh, this guy has probably equivalent to me, I think. So that I think is my strategy. How well it's gonna work, I don't know, because there's just so much chaos in this game. <laughs> I don't think I had any summons this time around, so I'm gonna move this. I'm not quite sure where the dot is. It's somewhere under there, and then there's gonna be another one somewhere under there, and then we start being able to see them again. <laughs> but you can see some of the difficulty of the board mixed with the track, especially with the overlaying over the board, and the overlaying of the board causes issues anyhow, as you can see. Any tile-based game has its little problems in terms of aligning everything. This, the board tries to help that, but it also ends up, you know, with you going out of the range of the board anyway to maintain that kind of realism of there's no fixed boundaries to this world. <laughs> well, the green player, seeing how well this collapse worked, has one in his own hand, which he gave himself. He also gave himself a cave cart because he's getting close to his limit of how much he can carry, and that'll give him... I think like four extra items he can carry. It carries three and doesn't count as one or something. This is the screwed up one. And he cast another critter, moving the marker up. Uh, basically just giving a little bit more power there in case something terrible happens that he has some defense uh, because his necromancer is alone. He's the guy who can split his necromancer, which is kind of a cool ability in two. It can save your life against the other guy's ability in a lot of cases. I haven't found a lot of use to, to it in this scenario, um, basically having a powerful necromancer has been kind of useful in terms of a stack that can actually do something and resist things. But you don't, don't want to expose it. The tendency not to be on an all-out attack means that you don't need that defensive capability that the second necromancer really gives you as much. Um, Clearly, in the two-player game, one person is usually all-out attack. The other person is doing what he can to either fall back and defend himself or maybe pull something like a bomb out of his ass that he can just drop hand to a critter and destroy the, ne the enemy necromancer. Um, another factor is trying to make the other guy use his power <laughs> because it's a one-time-in-the-game thing usually, except for, for this guy. Whipped around the board again this time, I think without any casts. I'm trying to see. Oh no, I created that permeator. So that stays here. All right. So we already, I think, talked about him. He's moving forward. He created this permeator uh, to kind of strengthen himself. That's what I was talking about. These guys looking for something to dig them out. Nothing coming up yet. Or some other ability. However, his power is keeping purple at bay and purple started digging into this hex he's got enough force he thinks he could defeat the thing gray over here who thought he had a great plan uh, with his brain sentry and the unknown ghost and i'm gonna move them to get him into position in case yellow can make an attack or purple makes an attack he doesn't have the power, even if he digs his way through, to be able to actually attack it, from what I can tell. I'm not certain here, but I'm trying to look at, you know, all the things this guy has. 
Now he does have this black death, minus five to all attributes, blah, blah, blah. The opponent doesn't get to roll. It's hard to tell. He's got a humongous pile of things. So if I end up getting close, I'm going to have to look. But my goal was this brain sentry, but that only works on an opponent creature. That's not going to work. It doesn't work on a necromancer either, I believe. Um, mm, doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not going to work to help me with this. It wouldn't help with wandering monsters. It's not going to help with this either, which is neither a wandering monster nor an opponent's creature. So <laughs> I'm kind of drawing for some kind of critters or whatever that I can put into place. In this case, essentially doing the same, trying to beef up what he might be able to put. But at the same time, we've got this timer ticking down. Uh, if a lot of creatures get spent to try to make that attack, we may end up all losing. Somebody should win. I thought it was going to be over by now, actually. I thought this round would decide the game, but clearly that's not going to happen. Should be sometime soon, though. Yellow opens things up with a quick assassination attempt against this, but then you can see I've uh, collapsed another tunnel, and there's no way into this section now either. So basically, all three players except Yellow have been blocked unless they in less than until they can dig their way and yellow's coming through with their forces they've got some summoning capabilities uh available i got him off his card just i don't know because <laughs> it's gotten so complicated but i've got some more uh capability in my hand that uh i might be able to beat the big thing with what i've got it's going to be tough i kind of screwed up i did my assassinate i did my uh archery attempt with my demon archer against number five here if i had done it correctly i would have swapped this weapon into his hand this big sword so he could have shot that <laughs> instead that gives him a plus 10 to the weapon that would have pretty much guaranteed one win as it was he lost the first two rounds no damage to him that thing didn't have any uh, uh ranged weapon capability certainly not out at this range uh, the archer's really potent with that. But it looks like yellow's got the first real shot at it. Uh, unless people have digging capabilities that I'm not aware of anymore. All right, so there's a problem with trying to use more cards than there are in the deck, essentially. Um, with a throne room, I don't have a good way to represent a spawning pit. I could fake that, but spawning pits are the thing that you can't cover up. So what I'm saying here, in my mind at least, is any of these events that create a place that I can't duplicate, that'll be the throne room, some of the special locations. For whatever reason, I have an extra one of these, probably the duplication of counter sets. I could actually probably use this as my throne room. It contains a throne room on it and then cover up some of the extra hexes. Uh, but after this, I have no more spawn pits that I can add to the board. Well, I got one there. <laughs> and that's the one from the card that created it, which that may eventually get cleared up enough that I can replace it with other pieces. I've got some weird situation here where I've got some tunnels. So here there's like two blocks and then three spaces, and, you know, I might be able to swap pieces in and out to start fixing the board as I go. Uh, but in this case, this is probably the last spawning pit room that I'll have in the game. The only one with enough freedom to try to get any of his pieces into play against this, I looked at the numbers and he just doesn't have them. Uh, this thing of 48 across all his attributes, I just don't have anything that can take him out. Unless I have uh, an item, which I do not see in play. The numbers just don't come there. Now I have the cards in hand that could create the numbers, but there's a couple of problems. One is I can at best hit two spaces. One, two, three puts me in range of that necromancer who could steal one of my 
critters. All right, that's his once per game ability. Permanently take control of an enemy squad. I can sacrifice one, beat it up, and then do it again, whatever. But the way I'm looking at it is I'm going to start digging into this space. So I too have to dig to get enough of a grip on that, that statue that I can throw enough units on. Plus, I don't have the resources in place yet uh, to cast. I've got a couple of big critters in my hand that would help things. I've got some spells that will help things. I'm going to have to you know, optimize what I've got, and then I'll throw it at it and see if I can get it. But someone else may make the run first. Everybody's got a shot right now. None of them are very good shots. Passing over to the red side, I passed this uh, pick over to my necromonks in exchange for a spell they were holding so they can dig faster. So they finished up their digging on this space, but unfortunately they drew this hall of monstrosities. Um, I'm not going to allow them to pull this piece up. I can't replace it easily, can I? Maybe I can. Yeah, I can. All right, I'll let them pull that up. And so there will be another sum another uh, summoning pit occurring there. <laughs> Let's see what happens. But yes, this, I think, is actually the end of the line for the potential pits. The only reason I'm doing it here is this is actually what this is. And it's going to have a guardian and it's going to make all kinds of more chaos. And we love chaos. Otherwise, we wouldn't be playing this game. Oh, I completely screwed this up. So... <laughs> I was digging into this hex. That's where I started digging. Not the hex I'm in. These problems weren't there. I could have solved it by pushing down this way. What I couldn't do was push the direction I wanted to. But I totally and royally screwed it up by placing this here. I'm going to try to rebuild what I had, but I don't know what it was. I just know that this guy was dug in and there was some block there but i don't know how bad it was crap this is almost certainly not what it should be but it's close i think i've got her plugged up this ghostly thing moving around in the rocks back here most importantly it looks like purple actually is in a position where they can launch an attack problem Problems my necromancer has a lot of my strength. And he cast a spell. So I don't think I have enough points to launch an attack. I can't invoke to bring new critters in. Oh no, 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 no. No necromancer cast a spell. The necromonks broke through. Okay, so that means the necromonks. Let's keep him here. Will not be able. Uh, They'll not be able to fight because they finished their dig. But I may just be able to get a launch in. One, two, three. If I can get a three hex attack in on that thing, I'm in good shape. I might be able to get more hexes in, though, because I have items, I think, like override lord control. Well, I shifted this unit over here so I could grab control of one of the yellow units. Um, this is not the beginning of my turn anymore. Am I prevented from moving out of a zone? Jeez, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see if I can get two. My intention had been to use that uh, ability to kill, use one to kill the other. And then eventually when I dug out, I'd have more power. Uh, this is a permanent change of control and I just, I lose this thing to become a wandering monster, as far as I can tell. It says abandoned, I think. That's sort of an optional role, if I recall correctly, being able to abandon things, um, which I felt allowed too much flexibility. I think you should be able to abandon items, but not critters, probably. Anyway, let's see if I can figure out any way to get somewhere in the vicinity of 48 in there, uh, above 48, because I don't want to make a low odds attack, not at this point in the game, but 
uh, I have a lot of opportunities available to me, including moving up to it and then casting a summoning spell here. If I take control of this thing, it'll fight that, and then I won't be flanked, or vice versa. It doesn't matter which one I take. So I've got a lot of opportunities here to slam into that statue with a lot of power. I think this, as far as I can tell, it was legal to grab this and move it out. The only restriction is if you move next to an enemy unit, a, a squad or a monster, you have to stop. <laughs> it actually says you have to stop and attack it, which, you know, so this is the thing. If you've already used an action, you can't move next to something then, maybe, but uh, not an action, an activation or something. Um, that's where I got the kind of, um, why I was a little unsure of that and ended up playing it differently than is intended. Let me see if I can find it. Let's pass this. I just found it not long ago. Uh, if a squad moves adjacent, the squad must stop immediately. The squad cannot move again. Now a comet may be taken as below. So even here it's a may as well. Okay. Um, but the key, and this is the only place that I found it, but, you know, I didn't look exhaustively through the rules. They're, like I said, not terribly well organized. And I'm, my mind's not terribly well organized. I don't like to search too many times. So if I find something that leads me to believe what I already kind of half believed anyway, I, I go with it. Faith-based gameplay. Okay, so I could take this over and then move it away from uh, the unit I would have rather had, this Necro Giant, but that's okay um, because this is pretty decent too. The Necro Giant, I want it because I think he has a better... Well, no, this guy has the weapon now, so he's actually kind of stronger. It's just I didn't need the missiles. And he's weaker on these other attributes. The Necro Giant is stronger across the board. I think I'm going to be using the three left-hand sided uh, stats. The reason for that is I have a couple of bonuses on weapons. I have this big insectoid, which is big on weapon and strength. Um, I cast myself another critter, a trinket. <sighs> I add up the values, and yes, I could add up all the different lines, but it looks to me like the obvious is going to be uh, the weapon as my central. So, well, I'm going to count them up and uh, write them down somewhere and then come back. This isn't so bad. 59 in the top rank, the strength there. 87 for weapons. That's the big one. And the, the question was kind of, and maybe still is, hey, you know, this necrotic devil's kind of good on this side. I'm really good on this side. Maybe that side's not the best. And then 65 over on the armor. So the weak one's a 59, which is a plus 11. That means the other two are more than plus 12, so I'm automatically victorious. I'm gonna kill the statue, and now I get its eyes. But that's not enough, right? I've gotta go home with those eyes now. Um, we got a little counter for the eyeballs. This may also be for the wandering eye thing. I don't know. Um, somebody's got to grab it. I might as well make it my necromancer. He's not the fastest thing I've got, but if they can kill my necromancer, the game's over. And he's next to almost everything else, so I can kind of relay things. Um, chances are I've got it here. This is where that teleport ability would come in really handy if you had it, right? But he used it up early to save his life. I think pink's, uh, purple's got this one, but can't be sure until it's all over. Really cool card uh, here, this Necrovat. It counts as two items, though. It'd be neat if they had, like, two arrows up here to indicate that, but only the Necromancer can use it. Invoking con Construct and Summons creatures doesn't cost an action. So you could, you know, move, is it creatures? Yeah, only creatures. Pity. What I was thinking was you could, like, you know, create... Uh, well, you still can do some of it. So you could, like, move and create a bomb or an item. No, no, no. Yeah. You can do that anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm... 
terribly impressed with it as creatures because you're still going to have that movement weird limitation on creatures that are uh, created. But it does mean that you can create creatures and cast spells at the same time, for example, which can be kind of potent. Okay, what is Gray doing? Gray's whole game here revolves around the brain sentry. I can grab control of one thing within two spaces for my turn only, which means I could grab the necro giant and slam it into this space. If I move here, this is the closest I can get, I still can't get anything else. So this is the best I can do is bring the necro uh, giant in and launch an attack. How useful is that? That's probably just getting the Necro Giant killed. But he can kill adjacent smalls from the Constructor Bribe deck. That's not the Sorcerer. That's not this either. That's not small. And this isn't small either. Hmm. Ah, jeez. I just don't think he's got the numbers to face this on either side of things. I'll keep thinking, see if there's something else I can think of, but because to some extent I don't want to take away Yellow's Critter. Yellow's kind of on my side in this, at least temporarily. But if I move through a rock, I'm gonna have a hard time. I'm gonna try digging my way to connect us up, make it easier to get in here. That statue no longer counts. So I got two ways to do it. One way would be, I've got this magnetic rune stro stone. I can move an enemy, I just cast, I just invoked it. I can move an enemy stack uh, squad up to two spaces. So I can move this in here, but then it would be fighting both. If I grab him instead, and I'd need to move this in order to get it in range of this. If I grab him instead and push him here, this here then I can take control of this and launch a direct attack on that what I can't do is one of the things I wanted to and this gets rid of this thing which is oh actually it's important that I be here so that I can pass the object between us um, which was using the black death here oh no yeah that's a spell so I can't cast a spell because I invoked. That would have dropped, say, the Necromancer by five in each direction. I still don't think I can do this, but it's a slightly better chance than I had before. I'm going to calculate it out. There's kind of a, what the fuck, I might as well do it. It's kind of last, last chance shots here. Uh, if I were playing, I wouldn't, put, I wouldn't totally pre-calculate it. I would say, you know, I don't have another chance. <laughs> So, here are the comparisons. This is the attacker, this is the defender. And you can see, yeah, I got kind of close here with six, but 14 away, 13 away, 17 away. Basically, I can't win on anything here. This is going to be a failure by my side now. This guy didn't move, so he wouldn't have given up digging until this moment. But, uh, you know... Sometimes you just kill things because it's what you do. And now we're going to have all this crap dead and some stuff left behind. And I have failed on my attack. Uh, and the yellow player is pretty pissed because he lost a decent critter that maybe he could have done something with there. <laughs> of course, Gray's like, well, I don't really care if you win or not. I mean... <laughs> I wanted to take my chance and I didn't want to calculate it all out, man. The best Gray was able to do was cast this huge undead de demon, loaded up with items. Some of these are trinkets. One, it can carry one item. I gave it the can't be flanked one uh, so that it's going to be tougher to attack. Charged in and slammed into uh, the demonic archer, killing that. You can see that's there. I forgot to put the uh, gore in there, though. On can see purple starts flying away with all their stuff. Notably the eyeballs are in this death thruster with a big speed of six. Unfortunately can't use an item otherwise I could have given it uh, 
what, plus two movement. But instead, my Necromancer ran back. He's kind of protected, too. It's kind of important to keep them both. Either one dying would be bad, right? If I lose my Necromancer, all my critters stop being mine, and I can't win anymore. He brought himself a creature, a small creature. He had another small he could have cast, but he didn't have enough stuff. And this uh, chaotic collapse, which is going to be to close the door after him uh, as his forces leave. But he can't cast it this round because he did invocations. Alright, well, trying to do my best, I drew from the chaos deck and then did some digging into here. Using single tiles to mark the alcove that I found because I don't have enough uh, tokens left of the right type. Um, in the process though, boy did I draw a lot of events. Uh, things moving things from pit to pit and generating new critters and everything. There's going to be a, a mess after this. Still haven't moved my Necromancer. I've got some interesting options here. For example, I got this fast astral worm with a movement of seven. One, two, three, four, Five, I could attack the Necromancer. The Necromancer doesn't have a terribly powerful stack anymore. Um, he's got this Insidious one, though. And in a combat, he could do a Chaotic Collapse. So it's unlikely I'm going to be able to do anything. Now, the Astral Worm has a neat ability. He'd perhaps be able to de defeat the Insidious one and take it into his stack. And then if I made an attack on special, well, I'd obviously win special, but I'd lose the next two without much question at all. That's a very weak creature with a neat ability. Um, so unless I had, he can't carry items, I could send the Shriek with him. That would give me a little bit more power over here. I'd have a total of 19. I think it's worth taking a shot at trying to kill off uh, this Necromancer. I've got enough movement capability. The Shriek's just a trinket, item, a trinket creature. Um, no. Because this damn monster showed up. I can't move through it. Shit. Because I'm going to end up here. I thought, oh, I got all this connection, but I got to move through this space. And there's no way I'm going to be able to get all the way there. Crapola. Uh, and the guys who dug, their action for the turn was digging. The way I'm playing it, you can't attack if you dug, right? You can't attack if you took another action. If you end up next to something, so be it. At the beginning of your next turn, if it's still there, you have to fight it. And you have to fight it without using an action type of fighting. Uh, but that's just the way I'm interpreting the rules. Apparently it's incorrect, but that's okay. Uh, I want to be consistent here. I'm just trying to look for a way that I can get kind of a victory, stop this victory. But I'm not seeing it. I'll be back after a little bit, see what all that chaos happened. There is a way. The Ogre Lord was holding on to this enhanced... Uh, expedition so I pass this off to my necromancer he's moving with his stack here used up two movement points now he's gonna cast that as a spell his action will be spell casting I don't know if he has any other spells on hand unfortunately he had a another tooth of speed that he could have used um, and remember he's carrying like one of them stupid carts with him which is why he's got so much crap with him So I have this piece of shit with them. We'll see if I can move everybody. Uh, I've only got five movement points, so I could do one, two, three, and bring the entire stack into play here. All right, let's see. I'm going to try to build something on that hex, because if I can get something, ignore events with that spell. So I get the Tunnel of Coldest Flame. That means as long as I don't have a critter, okay, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead, I'll just put this in. 
I really need another alcove there instead of that thing, but that's okay. Um, and it's these three spaces that just got built. So let's see if there's anything in them. Well, there's something in them. Two, and just some gore. So I've got a free attack coming through and I'll be running through and picking up that crap. I've got five movement points. I've got three more. One, two, three. I'm in place to launch an attack on his necromancer. Uh-oh. Okay, so to begin with, I outclass his necromancer by a little bit. 11 points here in special, but everywhere else, just by a little bit almost everywhere except over in uh, Bloodthirsty. So definitely I'm going to want to hit this one, but more importantly, I have this Astral Worm. Before any attack, fight only with special against one creature in enemy squad. What it doesn't say is that I only get one creature. So I'm saying I get 35 points against his Insidious one. I beat it. It's now on my side, which means that changes everything. This is down to 12. 12. <laughs> I'm at him with his six armor. On the other hand, I'm adding to all of these. So this goes up to 30, 12, 47, uh, 28, 34, 27, and 9 there is 35. Uh, I'd rather not dip all the way down here, but I got like a plus 17 there, so that's okay. Uh, this is only plus 6, this is plus infinite, this is plus infinite. So if I hit up, he up here on the strength side, I'm guaranteed two wins. I just killed an Acromancer. Bang! This critter also dies at the same time, the one that I just took over. That's what happens when it's done with the battle. Uh, it fights with the worm for the remainder of the combat and then dies. So, I've taken out red, or purple. He ain't winning. An intriguing option I just thought of, and this is the mess we see after this. All these wandering monsters, most of them carrying equipment. A big pile of loot right there. One interesting option I thought of uh, is when you die, not, your spells just are discarded, uh, the, the cards you have in your hand. But it might be something of an incentive to prevent early turtling or whatever. Worthwhile to say, not only do you get the resources of the person you just schwacked, but you get their hand too. Huge bonus? Probably not that big. It would give you a lot more opportunities and options in your hand after, you know, usually when you, if you attack someone, you're going to expend a lot of effort, pretty much everything you have probably to take someone out. You may have to expend one of your, spe your only special ability for the game uh, to do it. So now you're kind of weary and maybe the guy next to you is like, mm, huh, you're pretty weak right now, aren't you? <laughs> um... All right, but instead we're just going to discard them as usual. Now we've got a pile of things to take care of and they're going to be really chaotic because some of them affect all these wandering monsters moving around. It had looked like there wasn't going to be a lot happening, but man, everything's going to move. And this video is going to be too long after this cycle. <laughs> I think we're going to have one more short one after it as Gray tries to rush their stuff home and probably gets killed too. <laughs> I don't know. This is really a potent stack. Remember, this was the guy who had the best chance at the, uh, at the evil bitch. And it's kind of, I don't know, to, oh, I'll get back to that in a moment. It, it, it's kind of enheartening to see that he was able to use that power after all in something that didn't look like he had a shot at or a real shot. Um, one thing that I screwed up though, in that pile of loot, there was a chaotic collapse. I did not cast this, I'm not going to go back and try, but it would have been a possibility that during this attack, on a low enough die roll, a collapse could have prevented that attack from happening. 
people always forget things in games like this. <laughs> this is a game where you have to, you know, it's like there's just so many pieces of of uh, of information that you have to be keeping track of at the same time that you are going to screw things up and if you're me you're going to be pissed off at yourself the way i am at, in magic if i screw up in a closely fought battle or whatever uh, i never much mind the ones where it's just a blowout one way or the other if i screw something up but man <laughs> I would be cursing myself at this point if I was this guy, realizing that I couldn't do it because, you know, once, well, here's the thing. Once combat started is the only time I could cast the spell, and I don't think I could stop the combat at that point. Uh, I might be able to seal those guys behind a wall so they couldn't do anything after it, but I don't know how much that would really do. I'm still dead. All right, let me clean some stuff up and then we'll start going through the 